Hi, everybody. We want to thank you for tuning in for this Thursday's edition of The Missing uh, live stream. This is where we take a look at the cases that we've covered over the years for our series, The Missing. For those of you who don't know, The Missing is a series where we go back and we highlight and talk to the families of people who have vanished uh, or, you know, have come up missing without a trace from the Houston area. Um, you know, it's been a series that's been happening for the past year now. And so many families are able, some of them have been able to get closure. Uh, others are just able to keep their voices heard and keep their loved ones' uh, names alive while they are missing. Uh, so right now, in today's edition, we're going to be speaking with the mother of Roberto Franco Jr. Um, he vanished under some, some very interesting and alarming circumstances. So I want to begin by playing you guys a little clip from the story we did on Roberto Franco Jr. So somebody called you and what did they say? That they had Robert and that he was the jefe of the plaza. He was the jefe. Like meaning the, the boss. boss. Yeah. In the summer of 2017, Lisa Torres answered a call while she was in Mexico desperately searching for her 21-year-old son, Roberto Franco. The person on the other line claimed they'd taken him and that if she paid, he'd be returned safely. Did you guys give these people money? My husband says, I'm gonna pay because what if it's real? He goes, I'm not gonna have that on my conscious word. <laughs> If I don't pay it, it really is him. Mm, very emotional. I want to bring in now uh, Lisa Torres. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. What is it like for you kind of watching that, that, that part of the story back? Very emotional. It was very mm. emotional. It just took me back you know, to uh, when it happened and it's, it's, it's still so fresh. Yeah. And it's, it's, you say it's still fresh. Now, it has been five years. Is it going on six now or has it still been, you know, it's five years, correct? Right. It's going, uh, it's a little bit more than five and a half years. Yes. Well, five years and 11 months. Yeah. Uh, and, and for people who don't understand this uh, or, or the part about the payment. So Roberto went to Mexico and yes. he went with a friend and they drove and they crossed at the, and correct me if I'm wrong, Agualeguas or the Los Indios border, correct? Los Indios, yes. Okay. Um, and after they crossed that border, no one knows what happened to this day. No, not even the police, N no one, no one has come forward, yeah. N nothing. There's, it's like if the dirt just swallowed him. And you did, you, you mentioned, you know, you went out to Mexico, but we started this story out. You were in Mexico searching for him and you got a call from someone saying they were the jefe of the plaza, which means the boss of the area. And that if you paid them, um, they would return Roberto. And in, in yes. this video, what you say, you know, uh, your husband pretty much said, I don't want to take the chance and this be real and not pay. So you guys did pay. And not only did you pay for Roberto, you paid for the friend that he left with. Right. Right. How much money did you give, give to whoever that was? Um, it, it was, I, I want to say twenty five hundred. Yeah. I mean, looking back on that, do you do you to this day have any idea who might have taken advantage of you guys in that moment, or you, you still just kind of have no clue? We don't. We don't know. Um, it is well known that there's extortionists that. Uh, since it's very common in Mexico for kidnappings that they will 
uh, just ordinary people will call and play on the emotions of the uh, victims' families. And, and that's what we really want is for them to come home and we want it to be real in it. And at that moment, we just want it over at that moment. So they know how to manipulate. And so uh, a lot of us pay. Yeah. And, and after you paid, you were told that he was going to be returned and you just never heard anything else. Right. Right. Even the phone number, when we would call back, it was disconnected. So um, it possibly was just the extortion. But then again, we we're not sure. We don't have that certainty of it was him or if it wasn't him. Yeah. And Roberta was actually so he left the weekend, Friday, July 29th, 2017. And he was set to start a new job on Monday. So this was meant to be just a quick, you know, weekend trip. He went with a friend. You had no idea that he was even going to Mexico until right. you got a call that he was missing. And I do want to play this part of the video um, for, for people to see really quickly. Lisa called her husband to check in that Friday night. And that's when he told her that Roberto never made it to his family's home in Mexico. He says Robert didn't make it to where he was going. I'm like, what do you mean we didn't make it to where he was going? Lisa and her husband traveled to Mexico to try and find him. A lot of people have started calling his phone uh, from fam our family members, and they would get the same thing. They would answer. and Somebody would, would pick up the phone. Someone would answer the phone, but they just never spoke into or said hello, or they would just like listen. She says they had no luck getting help from Mexican authorities. The FBI confirmed that her son and his friend crossed the Los Indios border into Mexico, but there was no sign of either of them after that. Authorities here said he was, it sounded like um, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. They just said wrong place, wrong time. Wrong person he was with. Wrong person. Mm -hmm. That was something that really stood out to me during our interview. You said all they all they could tell you was wrong place, wrong time, and then you said wrong person. Can you, right. to to this day, elaborate on on what you meant by or what they might have meant by wrong person? Um, um, the FBI did mention that um, they look at their Facebooks and. Um, there was just some questions about the person that he was with. And so that's what the FBI came down to was the wrong person, wrong place, wrong time. But they couldn't give you any answers beyond that. No, it was just uh, what they said at the moment. Yeah. And I know I asked you this during the interview. I said, do you think that that the friend he went with was wrapped up in, in, in something bad or caught up, you know, with bad people? And you said, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just, I don't know. Has that changed? I cannot believe that because I've spoken to him. Uh, he's come to my house. He's come inside my home. Uh, he's a very respectable young man. Um, he had... Um, he would have well-paying jobs. Uh, so it's it, it's all a confusion. Uh, I just don't understand, honestly, what the FBI meant. I mean, I would just need some hardcore evidence uh, to even think that yeah. of him. Since our story aired, did you get any follow-up from missing persons detectives did anything come of it? No, no, nothing. I have sent email even to the email to the Mexican authorities. I have not been able to travel to Mexico um, due to health and well, also my passport has been expired. And, and so I either call or um, send an email and I have had emails that have not been answered yet. So it's, I at least send two times a month and I have not received a response to uh, those emails. Yeah, so you're still pretty much 
because uh, what we met almost a year ago nearly you know yes. quite quite some time oh uh, you're still in the same place that 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 you were when, when we talked yes yes what is no that one like? has come forth no one has come forth uh I don't know if there's fear. I mean, someone has to know something. I mean, his group of friends, the friends that they have in common, no one has come forth. You know, and I, the years have already passed. I just want to encourage them to just to come forth and let me know something. If they know something of what had happened. I mean, so I could have closure. I still see that that same emotion, you know, from the first time I interviewed you. Um, it was hard for you to hold back your tears. And, and I still see that same emotion. And I remember asking you then, I said, does it ever get any easier? You know, is this going to get any easier? I mean, how are you how are you kind of staying strong or, you know, even just continuing to move forward with this uncertainty of what happened to your son? I don't think I will ever get over it. Not until I know something. Um, I have been uh, maintaining um, myself with my faith and my church, um, being around uh, faith-filled people, uh, mm -hmm. positive people uh, that lift me up and and uh, believe the same thing that I believe. So that has helped me, although um, moments like this, I still have, I still cry for him. Yeah. It's just, it, it doesn't get easy, it does it. Yeah. And I know when we talked, I said, you know, do you believe that your son is still alive? And you said, yes, that you, yes, you did. Um, do you still believe that? Yes, I do. M my faith has kept me strong. My God has kept me strong, and and I have that. I have it. I believe He's alive. I I honestly believe He's alive. I have not received any. Um, Uh, feeling or impression that uh, he's not here. Yeah. So I stand on that and I stand on God. Yeah. If uh, you could send one message to your son right now, you know, if he was out there and able to see this, this is going to be online, on Facebook, on YouTube. I mean, what, um, what would you say? Robert, we... We miss you. We love you. And I am still searching for you. And I won't stop. And if you see this, just know that we love you, we miss you, and we want you home where you belong. You belong with us. Somebody out there knows something. I mean, we, we see right now the the crime and you know even with the tourists who just recently crossed the border um you know in met we see like all this crime and this cartel war and all of this violence happening in mexico i mean what is it like i mean just just kind of knowing i mean you're holding on to hope but i mean when you see what's happening is it kind of does it kind of make you think that you, because of where this is and the, the country it is and the violence we're seeing that you might never get those answers? Anything is possible with God. It does seem impossible. It's a big mountain. The governments on both sides. What I saw with the Americans, how the American government just rushed over and really put the pressure on the Mexican authorities to find those Americans. Um, I've I've seen it, and I just I just want the same thing for my son. You know, uh, I have read where a police officer had said, "Well, it was live." You know, there was a video; they were able to uh, react 
mm -hmm. quickly, I um, uh, want to say. Um, that's fine. I understand. Um, but my son is still an American and the American government can also still put the pressure, even though there's many years that have passed by. He's an American citizen. I just want the same treatment for mm. my son. Yeah. Um, put the pressure on Mexico to find. And this is not only my son. I mean, it's American. It's missing over there. There's a, there's a vast of uh, 550 Americans, I believe, one, the Washington Post uh, had put out American mm. families that are missing. Uh, and that was the biggest question that we have is uh, why would these Americans that had passed over to Matamoros during, I believe, I, I don't remember a couple of months ago. Um, what is the difference? They're yeah. Americans. Yeah. And I did voice my voice that concern. Yeah. And today I have not received an answer from anyone, not from my American government. Yeah. Uh, I guess just watching how quickly that happened as well, you know, it catching and seeing it on video kind of shows you just how fast things can take a turn. I mean, this car came over the border and within seconds, you know, they were under attack. So it just, it just shows you kind of what's happening over there. I mean, you know, I mean, what is your suggestion right now to young people, especially young, you know, Latin Americans, Mexican Americans, um, who who are traveling back and forth across that border? You know, I mean, what would you say to them? You know, I was very puzzled about that uh, question because um, people are going to go, whether there's danger or not, whether mm -hmm. there uh, the U.S. gives an alert of going or not going, a travel advisory. Um, the thing I would, the, the advice I would give is if they go to Mexico to leave all their accounts open, all their passwords mm -hmm. to their loved ones, just as a precautionary, uh, uh, just as a precautionary because you just never know or even get, I, I know there's these uh, apps where you could be followed, mm -hmm. you know, it shows your movement, even mm -hmm. that, you know, there's in that sense. And I say that because sometimes I believe people don't believe it can happen to them. I didn't think it could happen to me. I didn't think it could happen to my son. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, although there, you know, there's a travel advisory, we, you know, we still go, we have family over there. Yeah. It's home. So, right. So I, I, that would be my advice is to have some kind of app that can follow you and it'll alert the people over here, leave your, give your accounts, passwords, just in case. That's a precautionary tool resource. Yeah. Lisa, thank you so much for, for taking the time out to do this. Um, we wanted to make sure, you know, we, we got around to, to update on this case. And I mean, you know, we're, we're still, you know, waiting for good news. You know, like you said, anything is possible with God. I do believe that. And I do believe that. That faith is very important. So we are we are hoping to, to one day have a positive update uh, to, to your yes. story. Um, thank you so much. Well, of course, thank you for being here. And for everyone at home watching this who'd like to see the full story for Roberto Franco Jr. or for the dozens of people who have gone missing with no answers from the greater Houston area, head over to fox26houston.com, uh, go to news and you'll see a section for the missing there you can look at all of the missing people take some time scroll through uh, that page because you never know you might see a story and you might recognize someone uh you know it really takes everybody it's going to take a village to get some of these people home and to bring these mothers these fathers these families closure uh so again thank you all for watching uh thank you lisa for for being here and again fox26houston.com and we will have uh, another uh, episode of The Missing airing uh, next Thursday. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Now you can also head over to my Facebook and Twitter pages, Gabby Hart News, to stay up to date on when certain things will be airing.